many. <laughs> Hello folks, well, uh, time for another video. It's about time, I'd say, after two months. But uh, yeah, um, you might notice a little bit of a uh, different quality in the uh, video. Uh, well, that's because uh, I'm using a different camera now. My camera that I usually use won't turn on anymore. It's it's a very old camera, it's, it's very good. But uh, yeah, um, it's starting to get a little bit outdated and now it's starting to show at age. So yeah, different camera this time, I'm lending my uh, girlfriend's camera. And I'll need to look for an actual camera for myself now. But for now, hopefully this one will do. I'm gonna talk to you with my face. Um, yeah, I did promise I will take a look at the MIDI controller that I hacked and repurposed for this synthesizer here, which will eventually become SQK. So let's uh, take a little bit of a closer look. Okay, so this um, synthesizer is currently a virtual analog bass synth uh, running on an Arduino de. But yeah, I want to turn this thing into uh, the vinyl version of XQK1. The reason I didn't at first because I accidentally dropped this MIDI controller and the pitch bend and modulation wheels broke off as well as some buttons that just disappeared. <laughs> and um, another reason is this thing is actually broken right now. I wanted to demo it before I was going to take it apart, but it decided to die. This video will be about uh, me taking a look inside of this and explaining how I converted this M-Audio X board into a, well, into a synthesizer. This MIDI controller is pretty damn amazing for DIY, um, because the front panel actually has a dirty little secret. This MIDI controller is essentially two boards. You have the main board, which um, uses an FPGA uh, for well, all the uh, things it needs to do to generate MIDI and uh, all the control signals. And, and then there's a second board, and that board is um, in charge of reading out all these knobs, the pitch bend and modulation wheels, which I have a joystick, this slider over here, and it's responsible for displaying values on this little display here. And the nice thing is that um, it communicates all the parameter changes and whatnot to the other board through serial. So this means this you can essentially see this as an Arduino <laughs> with a, lo a whole load of knobs. Uh, and a display attached to it. Uh, the buttons are not connected, but well, they're buttons. Uh, it's not that hard to <laughs> read them out and um, also to control the LEDs in there. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's open it up and uh, I'll uh, show you the details. Okay, so to open this thing up, there's just a bunch of screws on the bottom side. And what you do is you flip it over like this, move it forwards, and then flip it over like this. There we go. Very easy peasy. And we're in just like that. So before I dive into uh, the electronics, I'm gonna take a short little peek at the key bed. Um, these are semi-weighted keys. They have little weights under the keys here. Uh, they feel really nice. Uh, you have a nice little, how would I say it, button feel to it. So you can really feel the press really nicely. Of course it is velocity sensitive, which is really nice. Um, essentially what it does is uh, there's uh, two rows of uh, switches in here. And when you press a key, one switch will go on first. Then we press further, the second switch will also turn on. And essentially the time between the two switches turning on determines the velocity. So that's really easy to uh, read out with an uh, Arduino. And this uh, keyboard also has a uh, pressure sensitive strip running through it, which allows for aftertouch. Now unfortunately, 
on this keypad um, I accidentally ruined the aftertouch strip. The connector at the end uh, broke and I haven't really been able to recover it so uh, that's a bit of a pity. I did want to implement aftertouch into SQK1, I thought it was a really interesting idea. That won't work uh, but I could eventually buy a new strip and just put it in there. It's just uh, something that is, um, I think it just uh, uses double sided tape or something to uh, put it in so you can just rip it out put a new one in done so yeah the keypad is actually really nice um, and has a lot of features which is handy for DIY so this is currently the insides of the uh, virtual analog synth okay so this is the power supply board from earlier um, yeah, as I said nothing special 5 volts 12 volts on the back here it also has a USB connector which goes through this cable to the Arduino. I did this so I can always uh, reprogram the synthesizer without taking it, taking it apart. Which is another advantage of using a MIDI controller like this is that they pretty much always have a USB port on the back there. And that U USB port you can reuse for, well, for your DIY project. In this case for an Arduino so you can reprogram it without taking it apart. And here we have the front panel board in all its glory as you can see a whole bunch of knobs a whole bunch of buttons with lights in them as well a bunch of connectors uh, these are these connect through well the external uh, potentiometers such as the aftertouch the modulation and pitch bend wheels and the slider on the front panel and of course the thing that makes this so great this chip here and the chip is an Atmega 48 which is a chip that can be used with the Arduino IDE you do need to download a um, library for it but um, no, other than that it's very easy to reprogram this thing so the programming header which actually had the header pin still connected as you can see here um, that's just your standard uh, um, in-system uh, programming header. So you can just use an Arduino, you know, or whatever as an in-system programmer. Um, it's essentially just programming another uh, Arduino. The Arduinos also have the same header. In fact, I should show that. So here you can see an Arduino Uno, the original OG, <laughs> next to the uh, front panel board. And as you can see, both have the same kind of header. And so happens to be that these are the exact same, exact same uh, headers functionality-wise as well. They're both I ICSP as headers. Which means you can treat this front panel board the same way you would treat this Arduino if you would program this Arduino um, with another Arduino. But there is one thing you need to pay attention to. In my case, uh, I'm running this system on 3.3 volts, which I think is the original voltage uh, the, um, the MIDI controller also worked on. I actually forgot to check before I took it apart. Um, and since I'm using 3.3 volts, um, the Arduino Uno works with 5 volts, I added a little um, voltage converter right here. So this is just a, uh, a tiny simple board which you can buy for I think a dollar or something. Uh, which converts the 5 volts coming from the Arduino Uno to 3.3 volts and the 3.3 volts from this board to 5 volts um, if necessary. So this acts as a safety buffer so that I don't overvolt any parts on this. This board can run on 5 volts. You don't need to use 3.3 uh, volt. I've run it on 5 volt just fine. The, 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 obviously the Amiga chip is specified uh, for 5 volt just fine. Um, uh, it is fine. Uh, but I do recommend using the original voltages, which is 3.3. I added uh, this, um, well, kind of improvised little header here, uh, which just plugs in straight into the Arduino on that same header. So right here. So that just plugs in. Voila. Then there is this wire here. It's just a standard Arduino as in-system programmer to program another Arduino. So you can just follow the instructions on the Arduino website for that. Just make sure you use the um, Atmega 48 library 
uh, which of course I will link in the description below. Make sure you set the clock speed right. I believe this was set at 8 megahertz standard. Now I will include my code for this uh, board. The way I programmed it, it uh, well, it's just um, I read out all the knobs. If a knob value has changed, I display it on the um, seven segment display and I also send it through serial to the Arduino de. And that brings me to the other connectivity on this board, namely these two big connectors here. And these two connectors are responsible for the buttons, the lights, and also has two connections to the Atmega chips. Um, one connection is um, a serial connection, so you can abuse that for serial obviously. So you can let this board communicate with another board, an Arduino or whatever. And it also has one spare digital pin connected, which you can use for whatever. I'm not using it at the moment, but yeah, obviously you can repurpose it for, I don't know, Obviously the pinout of these connectors I'll also include in the description. I'll probably put it on my website. So yeah, that was a little peek inside the EMU Xboard 49. Uh, it's a very exploitable MIDI controller. Again, I'll put all the valuable information into the links below. Um, I should also link some tutorial videos to uh, other YouTubers who made excellent tutorials on how to scan uh, keyboard matrices because um, uh, yeah, I don't really need to bother with that since they already did an excellent job probably a way better job than I'll ever do at explaining something so uh, yeah check out those links um, and have fun I'll say I'm going to have fun with this MIDI controller making SQK1 uh, it's a bit of a pity that I'll probably have to redo a lot of things uh, since I did put quite a lot of effort in this uh, virtual analog synth thing. Um, well, hey, at least it's fun. Uh, the journey is uh, an important part of the experience, not so much the uh, end goal as far as I'm concerned anyways. So I got, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the enormous delay of almost two months between videos. Um, I guess I just kind of had to get my shit together. Uh, I also hope the new camera or well loaned camera works out now I'm not sure when, when I'll get a new one but for now this one works pretty well so uh, yeah I'm happy and I'll see you guys next video bye bye